Hi, my name is Chu Gutierrez and welcome back to Boss Labs. And today I'm here at the studio doing some tests with some constant LED lights in relation to portrait photography. Some of my work comes from doing headshots for actors and business professionals, and I'm always using the same three lights. They're my go-to strobes. It's a Profoto B2, a Profoto B1, and a Profoto A1. And I've never tried anything outside of that. But lately I've kind of been seeing that some of these LED lights that I use in the studio are getting really, really, really strong. My lighting setups for my portrait photography are usually pretty simple and it got me thinking, can I use my LED lights to take a portrait? And before you get ahead of me, I'm not just trying to take any portrait with the LED lights. I kind of want to set some rules. I want to be able to take a photo with an f-stop of at least four or higher if possible. I want to keep my ISO at 100 and I want to keep my shutter speed at around 200. So at least if my actor or my model is moving a little bit, I don't get any motion blur. That was the main part of this test. My portrait lighting setups tend to be two to three lights most of the time. I have my key light, I have a hair separation light behind the actor, and then I'll have a third light that sometimes I'll throw at the background. Other than that, it'll be a V-flat or a reflector just so I can fill in some areas or use them as negative fill. And that's what I recreated here today. And for my lights, I'm using three Nanlite Forzas. Two Forza 500s, one is my key light with a parabolic softbox 120, and one in the background, another Forza 500 in the background with the reflector attached. My third light that's hitting the background is a Forza 60 with a reflector attached as well. Before I start shooting, I just wanna let you my power settings. The Forza 500, that's my key light with the giant softbox, that's at 100% power. The hair light is at about 25% with the reflector on, and the Forza 60 that's hitting the background is at about 85% power. So let's start shooting. First, I started with a setting of F8, ISO 100, and a shutter of 200 to see if this light was strong enough to get me a proper exposure. As you can see, we're definitely getting an exposure, but it's not properly exposed. It's a little dark. So I decided to open my lens up to 5.6, and here is that result. While I do have the window on the other side of my studio uncovered and it's letting the natural light in, as well as having my in-house lights on, I think I can get away with adjusting my ISO in my studio before touching my shutter speed and still get a black frame when all the lights are off. So my new settings are F 5.6, an ISO of 200, and a shutter of 1 200th. And here are my results taking photos of Ben in that new setting. So once I was happy with the exposure I was getting at 5.6 with those settings, I decided to have a little fun. So I have a 1DX Mark II and that can shoot 14 frames a second. So I told my buddy Ben to just make a couple faces and I'll be shooting burst for about, you know, anywhere from five to 10 seconds. And I kept my settings as they were and I just fired away as he was making faces. And this is the kind of shots that I was able to get. And since I'm shooting at 5.6, uh, he can move a little bit without me losing the focus on his eyes. At the same time, I don't have to be worrying about the recycling time of a flash or anything like that. So it comes with some of its pros and some of its cons. Con mainly being for your model or your actor, as they're gonna have to deal with that giant bright ass light hitting them the entire time. Another thing we tried was switching over the V-flat over to uh, black to have some negative fail. And what you're gonna see happen here is it is gonna get significantly darker. One, because it's absorbing the light that's coming from the key light, but it's also absorbing a good chunk of the light that was coming back and hitting Ben in the back. And that was balancing off the V-flat to also fill in Ben's shadows on the opposite side. Gives them more of a moody look. You can see the portraits here side by side with and without, but you can definitely play around with both and still get a good portrait even if you don't have a B-flat next to your subject with the white on the other side. So to answer the question I had before I started doing any of these tests, which was, can I light a portrait session the way I would normally with my strobes using constant lights? And the answer is pretty much yes. While these lights aren't powerful to cover my settings all the way through to F8, they cover most of the range and they're very interesting to use and I think I'll give it a go next time I have a client who needs a portrait session and see what that plays out like. I also just wanna take a moment to thank my buddy Ben for coming to the studio and letting me photograph him and dealing with my shenanigans while I'm setting up and doing all these tests. So yeah, if you liked the video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more of this kind of content or random stuff that we're doing here at the studio, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.